I don't have my choir behind me, but I am going to get my preach on. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to SDG for another lure build today. Going to get my preach on with my first ever attempt at a preacher jig. So this comes by request slash suggestion from one of the one of my viewers. I'm sorry I can't remember who it was, but it had been I don't know a month, maybe two months ago. They said I'd love to know what you would do with a preacher jig, and I've never tied one uh, mainly because I don't have the mold you typically use to make a preacher jig. It's a minnow head or something like that, just a little head and a smooth collar and then one little bump at the end. So I don't have anything like that. I'm going to try to adapt a poison tail half ounce um, swim jig head and collar to this. If you don't know, I didn't know, the origin of the name Preacher Jig. So I had to write it down. Go figure, um, Preacher Jig is named after a guy, named, uh, it's a reverend preacher, so Reverend Bill Conan down in Georgia, this he developed this jig or this jig idea, and it's since been called the Preacher Jig because he was a reverend. So I don't know if he's still alive, but at the time that I found the article, um, he was a custom rod maker down in Georgia. So I don't know the guy, but I like what he's doing, and hopefully I can do him proud, and you guys will enjoy the build today too. Uh, I'm not going to go through the materials now. We'll go through them at the time when, as, we, as we move through it. I will say half ounce poison tail swim jig head with a modified collar and 210 denier flat wax nylon and olive. So without further ado, let's try this out. All right, yeah, so in the vise, there's the poison tail. Um, no weed guard here. Of course, that kind of works out. You can see what I did to the collar. So I snipped it off, unfortunately after it was painted, but I did snip it off, then I filed this down, and I've already laid a thread base down, kind of filling in those gaps. So we're going to go with a two-tone preacher jig today. The bottom's going to be white, the top is going to be olive. So think gizzard shad. I just particularly like um, green, olive, and white, kind of a green pumpkin, pearl, olive, white combination. I think it looks really great. So here's our first layer of white. You can see I am not going to trim this down at all. I really want as much length of that as possible. And I've already squared off the back. So I'll place that right here. This is the underside. And we don't want it to go all the way around the hook either. So constant pressure, especially with bucktail or any natural fibers. You can kind of push your thumbnail into it and move it. We want it just about halfway down on either side. Go ahead and flip it. And we'll put our olive in. Go ahead and separate it. So we'll go through around the hook a little easier. helps too. You see where my thread was when I started. It was all the way back here by my finger. Not at the front of this collar, but back here. That's going to help me secure it there and then I can kind of move back um, to keep it in place. As opposed to the other way, I have a tendency to lose it or at least lose control of it. So, and here we just want to marry it up. So there's no space. Again, every time I change hands, I'm keeping pressure on that bobbin. I keep pressure on so it doesn't, I don't lose it. Just enough so that it doesn't break. There we go. We'll move it, come all the way up to the head and then come back down and that locks it in place. All right, so first layer is in. Is there anything prettier than green olive and white? Man, it's probably why God made a gizzard shad that color. I mean, it just looks cool. Okay, uh, next step is going to be some flashaboo. So don't be stingy on the flashaboo. I've got 
of pearl. This is white pearl. I've got probably one, two, three, four, five, six. I got seven strands. As you can tell, I didn't even count it when I pulled it out. Just wanted a good bunch. So, sorry about the thudding. That's Reed upstairs continuing his bottle flipping career. He got a new bottle today. <laughs> I took him to the gas station because he had one in mind. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so spread that out right there on the bottom. It's going to be internal flash between our layers of bucktail, right? And I'm not going to cut it either. We want all of that nice flowing, everything that comes out the back, right? Um, so there's that one. And likewise, Fire Tiger, Olive Variant, whatever you want to call it, um, also Flashaboo. And again, there's probably at least six, if not seven or eight strands in here. Got to think you're going to be fishing this typically pretty deep. I mean, not always, I suppose, if you wanted to be on a ledge that was um, not as deep. It doesn't have to be. But a little added flash, uh, light uh, outside of a super clear uh, fishery. The light's going to be less down there. So some added flash, even though it might feel like overkill, in some ways, the added flash will probably help you out when you're that deep, fishing on the ledges and whatnot. Now we can move up to our next layer. Alright, pressure. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, it starts up and then it kind of tapers back down. I like it. I'll pull that back just a little bit, try to level it out. There we go. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna flip it over. So let's measure it here on the side. It'll be a little easier. Here's the full length. Here's where our last layer stopped so that looks pretty good my fingers right there at the back end of the head so transfer that go ahead and cut that separate it and in it goes Get it right there whoop follow my own advice move the thread back now we can reset here there. If it doesn't cover the sides perfectly, not a big deal. You'll see why in a minute. If you can get it to do it, then all the better. But not a huge deal if it, uh, if it doesn't work out. Here we go. Nice. I like it. I like it. I think this head's going to work. I mean, not a traditional head, but I think it's going to work. All right, so it wouldn't be a preacher jig if we didn't throw in some feathers, right? So I've got two grizzly saddle hackle. You can see I've got it just after the fuzzy stuff has started, and those shafts should be a little bit more flat, so now we can try tying them in. So I'm going to turn the jig here, lay it on its side, easier to deal with. Nice and easy back here by the feather itself, by the fluff. And as you move towards the head, increase the pressure on, the, on your um, thread. So just start to increase pressure as you move towards the head. There we go. One's in. If you put all kinds of pressure on it right away, it's going to have a tendency to roll on you. Sometimes it rolls regardless. You just can't get away from it. But um, less pressure on those first couple wraps with increased pressure as you, as you tie down the rest of that shaft typically will help. So we'll lay this guy on here. 
again just enough to kind of hold it in place see that now as I move towards the head I'm going to increase the thread pressure I get to the head and you can see that head moving around ranking on it now I can go back and clean it up there we go almost done last little piece I think this is a nice final touch personally peacock hurl right on top give a nice darker but still natural green with that iridescent quality kind of an emerald look almost really cool stuff um, and there's different lengths I mean most of them are roughly there but it's almost got a natural taper to it as well so I think this will be a nice finishing touch let's get it measured out we want it to be no longer than our green bucktail yeah I would say no longer than that okay split it place it right there dead center it wants to move on me try to keep it dead center so think, think uh, crankbait, think lipless crankbait, rattle trap, whatever you want to call it, square bills. So many of them have that, um, that dark back, right? Everything else may be different colors, but the darkest part on a lot of crankbaits, a lot of hard baits, is that back, right? That's what we're after. And that makes sense. The darkest part of a, of a fish is oftentimes right on the top. So that's it. I'm going to build up this thread collar a little bit. I am not going to cover it because you don't cover it with a preacher jig. Um, very uncommon for me. I like to cover my threads, but that's not the nature of the beast here. Whip finishes three, four, and five. And that is that, guys. I'm going to hit it with some loon here. Definitely want to loon this one up since those threads are exposed. Can't wait to see this guy in the water. I think it's going to be pretty fantastic. Well, there she is. So, as usual, let me get some close-up shots for you. Then we'll head over to the test tank and see how she swims. man but I am a jig man and from a jig design lure maker perspective I gotta say I thought it turned out pretty decent I tried to emulate like you're on a ledge and you were stroking it right off the off of a ledge somewhere deep um, I did a little jigging in there as it swam and just swam straight I thought in every situation it looked pretty good so all you guys that do preacher jigs on a regular basis, tell me how I did, right? It was a first time trying my hand at it. I think it turned out pretty decent, but you guys are the judge. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Hopefully you did enjoy today's video. And if you want to see more lure making just like this one, well then click on this video right here. If you're curious why I call the channel what I call it, click on this video right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys at the Vice.